What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my new career mode. This is episode number 41 and we start today's episode off by seeing that one of our youth players wants to terminate his contract and also a bit of money for our uh, progress if you will in the TIM Cup because in the last episode we did get knocked out in the semi-finals by Napoli. So Barone, our youth team goalkeeper, wants to terminate his contract. His overall is 58-62 to 62, which isn't the best but his potential is not to be snuffed at. He does look like he could hit 90 with enough game time. Obviously goalkeepers don't tend to develop until their later years but even so I don't really want to see a player of that class coming through the academy end up terminating his contract as he hasn't been offered one so we give him, uh, give him a new deal or a pro deal I should say and we'll wait and see what he says and we take on Empoli for the first game of today's episode here the first of two games in today's episode as we take on the relegation threat inside away from home they're currently sitting in 18th place last season Empoli were the side who didn't exactly end our title hopes but their score draw with us in the fixture we played at home against them in one of the final few match days was a big big reason as to why we slipped up and weren't able to stay top of the table so taking on Empoli right now they're sitting in 18th place hoping to get the win in this game away from home the first chance did fall to us as well but this shot was well saved with a goalkeeper in turn behind for a corner and in 27th minute another good chance for us here as Gabby Dini gets on the ball rolls it through towards Chupo Moting great chance here but sadly for us the Cameroonian can't hit the back of the net and he's only scored two goals since coming in he's you know only played a few games obviously but even so not a great start for him so far hopeful that will pick up soon enough but in the 36th minute Empoli had one of their first chances of the game and they'd score it as well it comes through Basha who we actually sold to Empoli at the start of last season right at the start of the series Basha gets the goal or was it during January can't remember now but uh, Basha gets the goal the Albanian midfielder smashing the ball past Bernie who was diving sideways really away from the ball and he makes it Empoli 1 Torino 0 so we fall behind in the first half with one of Empoli's first chances but in the 45th minute a great chance to equalise here as Ferenzi finds Hakan Shalanolu he takes it around his man and what a superb strike that is and I know I still can't pronounce this guy's name right as much as I love him but even so Hakan Shalanolu with a superb uh, strike there from just outside the area we know he can hit them from range he already has done a couple of times before and this is a really nice goal quick little fake shot to beat the defender and he's about 20 yards out levers the ball into the top corner and the goalkeeper has absolutely no chance so great strike there by Hakan into the top corner that's now his 10th goal in the Serie A this season what a debut year here he's having and it's Empoli 1-3-0-1 but if you thought that goal was good well that was absolutely nothing compared to this goal by none other than Hakan Shalanolu with an absolutely superb strike his second of the game and the first goal was good and everything but this this is just extraordinary absolutely superb from Hakan and you know we know this guy can shoot from range he's already scored a couple of nice goals this uh, season for us in his debut year including one in this game but even so this goal has surely got to be his best so far in his Reno shirt absolutely extraordinary with the outside of the right boot it is a wonderful wonderful goal I just I love the curve that this guy can generate he's got such an amazing curve stat and I love how much swerve you can get on the ball when shooting from range that was a wonderful wonderful strike I would say probably the best goal of the series so far and he makes it Empoli 1 Torino 2 so delighted with that goal and you know I said before we signed him for 15 million pounds and I wasn't really sure whether he was going to be worth the money or not but I'm telling you right now he is going to be worth a lot more than that in a few years to come he's already proven he's worth every penny of the 15 million pounds already so Empoli 1 Torino 2 Hakan's double does give us the lead for the first time in the game and in the 66th minute a great chance to make it 3-1 here as Gabby Dini gives it to the main man Hakan who gets on the board and plays, uh, plays it through towards Chupo Moting he's waiting for Hakan to run and instead he uh, gets a 1-2 with the Turkish midfielder Chupo Moting goes down the right hand side, picks up Hakan just inside the area and if it wasn't for a really good save by Bassi, our Turkish midfielder would have had his hat trick but it was still Empoli 1, Torino 2 and in the 81st minute a rare chance for Empoli to grab themselves an equalising goal as they get themselves through here, really good chance as Bernie comes out to meet the number 10 but thankfully for us he puts him off, he tries to chip our goalkeeper and Bernie has a pretty simple save and that was how the game would finish, Empoli 1, Torino 2 so delighted to get a win in this game and bounce back to winning ways after the disappointing draw against Napoli in the last game I'm really, really happy with that. We thoroughly deserved it as well. Empoli only had two shots and two on target. One of those was a goal. I felt we played much better than Empoli, although I will say a lot of our shots did come from range, admittedly so. That was just because I was really feeling of Hakan in that game. And because of the two screamers I scored, you can't really blame me. He was my player of the, man, uh, player of the match, no real surprise. And a great to match up another win in the Serie A season. Uh, following that, another youth player wanted to terminate his contract. As you can see, Baroni accepts his. So this is our young goalkeeper that's come in. 61 overall, 17 years old. And as you can see, he does have the potential to be special. So very, very happy with that signing from the academy. Despite his low overall, three-star weak foot, four-star uh, four skills, always nice. And 
And also this guy, Gagliardini, did want to terminate his contract. His overall is quite low, but his potential isn't bad. And the one thing I don't want to do with these academy players ju is just say, you know, flat out, you're not good enough. Because even though, you know, this guy will come into the team as he accepts his contract right here, and he won't play too many minutes for us, and he'll probably barely develop. I don't know about you guys, but I just love it when you have academy players coming through your team because you feel like you've done the job with that player right from the beginning, you know, so... This guy is 55 overall. You know, we, we need him to grow like 20 ratings before we can really consider him for the first team. And that's saying something. But, you know, it, it's still nice to have him just because I, I don't know about you guys. And again, it's, it's probably just a sort of a me thing here. It's exclusive to me. But I love getting academy players through your team, even if they barely play any minutes whatsoever, because you just feel like he's yours. You know, you made him. So uh, he comes into the team. He'll probably barely play for us. You probably won't even get on the pitch this season and get loaned out next year. But even so, he comes in and uh, they. There you go. He didn't have any uh, sort of showing great potentials anyway, by the way, just in case you were wondering. Uh, still, we take on Medina for the second and final game of today's episode here as the bottom place side travel to the top place side. So first versus 20th. You'd probably think this game is going to go only one way. We've faced Medina twice already. Uh, once in the TIM Cup last season when they were a Serie B side. We beat them by three goals to nil. And we also beat them in this uh, this season too, away from home by four goals to nil, I think it was. So taking on Medina, probably, you know, presuming another win in this game, as uh, arrogant as that sounds and it wasn't really a surprise we would take the lead in the 14th minute as well and what a goal it was. We scored two really nice goals in the last game against Empoli. This goal, probably not as good as those two strikes, but even so, Benassi is very happy with it and you can't really blame him. He gets the ball after the flick down here and on the weaker left foot on the first time half volley, rifles the ball into the top corner and the shot power on that was just extraordinary. Brilliant, brilliant strike by Benassi. He scored a screamer for us last season in the Derby della Molle against Juventus in that 4-1 demolishing of our rivals. That goal, you know, was probably better than this one but it was still really nice and for his first goal of the season you're certainly going to take it what a lovely goal by Benassi and it's 3-0 one with Dana Nil early on in the 35th minute it should have been 2-0 but Chupo Moting was denied by a really good save with a goalkeeper great stop there and it's still 1-0 and Chupo Moting just cannot get it sorted early on in his Torino career from the corner Engels gets onto it but he heads the ball off target and behind for a goal kick so still 3-0 one with Dana Nil and just before half time we did have a good chance to double the lead here as Danilo goes down the right hand side our right back picks out Florenzi takes it around his man plays it back to Danilo who crosses the ball in, looks for Poloski, he flicks it on, Medina failed to clear it, and it comes to Baselli who strikes on the half volley, but unlike Benassi, his half volley is off target, and it goes behind for a goal kick. So still Torino 1, Medina 0, but in the 63rd minute, a great chance to make it 2-0, Poloski's header going just wide of the post, and behind for a goal kick though, but from the corner, it's crossed into the box by Benassi, looking for angles, but instead, Hong Chol wins the header, flicks it in off, the, in off the underside of the bar, and gets his first goal in a Torino shirt. So delighted with that, Hong Chol scores his first First goal for the club, and that is really, really pleasing indeed, because he came in on a pre-contract. Uh, of course, we signed him last season in the January transfer window for a pre-contract to come in this season, and he's been a really underrated member of our squad. He doesn't play too many games, but whenever he does play, he runs and runs and runs and runs and runs and runs and runs, and that's what I love about this guy. He's just so full of energy, such high stamina, and he gets his first goal for the club, and that was really nice to see, and the fact he's on such low wages is always a bonus. He's just one of those great squad players you'd love to have in your team. So Torino 2, Medina 0. Hong Chol's first goal for the club. Medina would grab a goal back and a route back into the game eight minutes before time. Some pretty poor defending here from me. But what about this for a turn on Balanta? Turns him on a sixpence, turns, shoots, scores, and makes it 3 0 2. Medina 1. So. Really good finish there. A few minutes to go, Medina grabbed themselves a lifeline. But to be honest, they didn't really do too much in the game. And that was how the game would finish. We held on for the win. So Torino 2, Medina 1, 1 for Benassi, 1 for Hong Chou off the bench. Acosti's goal proves to be nothing other than a consolation goal. And I felt we did deserve it as well. We weren't exactly dominant, but I felt we were pretty controlled in that game, despite Medina's very high pass accuracy. Uh, Benassi was my player of the match. Uh, one goal and the assist for the Hong Chou goal as well. Always nice to see. And also, before we end the episode as well, we see a couple of things here. Uh, first and foremost, Poloski says thanks for playing me in the last game which is totally fine always trying to keep those players happy and we also decided to request some funds from the board as well as I mentioned in the last episode or maybe a couple of episodes ago now um, Bernie has his contract up at the end of next season and because he's obviously over the age of 23 he's in his 30s now because he's an 86 overall rated goalkeeper I don't want to see him leave the club in January on a free transfer so we need to raise some money to offer him a new really expensive transfer because a uh, contract because don't forget he's only on five grand a week which is crazy but uh, the board said he gives 800 grand that's fair enough 
enough. The only objective we upped was the cup competition, which we've already matched our objective anyway. And as you can see, we can offer Bernie a contract, still not as much as he wants. We'll try and give him an extra 70 grand, so that'll be 75 grand a week. But of course, he'll probably say no because players in this year's FIFA don't tend to negotiate deals and just flat out reject anything you offer if it's lower than their demands. But that does end the episode, guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the episode, then please do leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of my new career mode very soon.